Hi friends, today I'm going to explain you on the Rutherford model of the atom, which is also called as Rutherford scattering experiment. Now this experiment in the chemistry is very, very important because this experiment led to the discovery of nucleus. This experiment was done by the Ernest Rutherford with his co-workers in 1911. Now, if we discuss about the structure of atom, we today know the atom structure is looks something like this, containing nucleus in the center and electrons are continuously revolving around it. But before this, there were different theories put by the different scientists, for example, Dalton's theory or J.J. Thompson theory on this structure of atom. But in this particular video, I'm going to discuss only the Rutherford scattering experiment. But you can check out the J.J. Thompson theory or Dalton's atomic theory on my other videos. Okay, now I'm going to explain you the Rutherford scattering experiment with this diagram. In Rutherford scattering experiment, there are three main components. First is the alpha particles. Alpha particles are fast moving particles containing the positive charge. They resemble like the helium molecule. Number two, he took the very thin gold foil, very thin gold foil and placed in number three component that is the circular detector. The circular detector is coated inside with the zinc sulfide. You know why? Because zinc sulfide is fluorescent in color and therefore when this alpha particles will strike on the gold foil the particular areas on the detector will start glowing by which we can know where this alpha particle after striking the gold foil end up. Okay, now in this experiment what, it, what they did, they passed the alpha particles through these slits. These slits are used to streamline the alpha particles because you can see before the slits the alpha particles are not streamlined, they are moving in different directions. Therefore to streamline it they use the slits. So alpha particles are passed through the slit and striked on this thin gold foil. After striking this thin gold foil, the different different areas in the gold foil starts glowing. Okay, there are different different areas. I have not mentioned all the areas, but you can imagine this area, this area, this area, it can be this, it can be this here also. The different different areas will start glowing in on this detector. So this glowing areas indicates where these alpha particles after striking the gold foil end up. So what observation they made, I will explain it with the zooming diagram of a gold atom. For example, this is a uh, you know, zooming uh, structure image of a gold atom. Just think it. And these are the alpha particles that are striking on it. So what happened, they observed that most of the alpha particles passed straight through the gold atom. That is why in the first diagram you can see that this particular area is glowing which is just behind the gold foil. Most of the alpha particles on striking the gold foil passed straight through the gold foil without any deflection, without any obstacle. That is why this area starts glowing. Number two, you can see that there are some alpha particles which do not pass straight. They show some deflection. They show some repulsion from their original path. Okay, This is the original path of the alpha rays. But they are showing some deflection through the small angles. You can see this. Okay, That is why in this diagram you can see when the gold foil, when this alpha particles strike on the gold foil, they do not pass straight but they show some deflection through the small angles. And number three, they observed that very few alpha particles rebounded back. They just rebounded back. Okay, that is why, that is why you can see in this diagram when the alpha particles are striking on the gold foil, 
and st after striking the gold foil they are they are not passing through and going anywhere they are, they are just rebounding back this was a you know surprise and unexpected results that they observed they were expecting such small deflections but they were very surprised of this unexpected deflection that they observed so they made the following conclusion on this particular observation what were they they were number 1 you can see what was our first observation most of the alpha particles passed straight without any deflection that means most of the space in atom is empty that is why most of the particles passed straight without any deflection there was no obstacle in the atom that means that space most of the space in the atom is empty this was the first conclusion by his observation number 2 you can see when the alpha particles striked on the atom you can see there is a small angle deflection it look like that these alpha particles are repelled by something okay as we know that alpha particles are positively charged that means when these alpha particles they, they are showing here uh, repulsion something that means there is something which is also positively charged as we know that similar charges repel each other okay that is why when this alpha particles is approaching towards it it so it shows what it shows the repulsion it shows some small deflection that means there is something that is positively charged the second conclusion was there is some positively charged particle inside the atom that is why the alpha particles shows the small deflection through the small angles okay you can see and number 3 you observe that very few of the alpha particles rebounded back rebounded back that means there is something which is very hard which is very hard in the in the hard mass in the particular atom so three conclusions were based on this observation was that most of the space in the atom is empty that is why most of the particle alpha particles Moved straight, pass straight without any deflection. Number two, there is some positively charged particle. That is why the alpha particles show deflection towards the small angles. And number three, there is some small hard mass that is present in an atom. That is why the very few alpha particles rebounded back. So on this particular conclusions, okay. now what he concluded is that he gave you know put forward the nuclear model of atom that is most of the positively charged that is there is a positive charge center in an atom which is called as nucleus and all the mass is concentrated in this particular center okay that means there is a positive charge center in an atom that is called as nucleus and nearly all the mass of atom resides in this nucleus and number 2 the size of this nucleus is very very small as compared to the particular atom now if we compare the jj thomson model and the rutherford experiment what we conclude that according to jj thomson what he said he said that all the positive charge is spread throughout the sphere but after the scattering experiment what rutherford uh, uh, found he found that the positive charge is not spread throughout the atom but it is concentrated in the center it is in the center okay that means the three main conclusions are that in an atom there is a positively charged body which is called as nucleus and it is present at the center at the center and nearly all the mass of atom resides in that particular nucleus so uh, this was the uh, rutherford exception of the atom uh, this is all for this topic uh and dear friends if you have some other topics you want to get exp you, you know you, you want to explain on that topics you can write me the comment and uh, surely i'm going to discuss those topics thank you so much for watching and please please subscribe my channels 
and for Indian friends, if you want my lectures in Hindi, means you know mix Hindi and English, which can be easy for you, please let me know in the comments. Thank you so much and have a nice day. Bye bye.